firewalls. So for the Network Plus exam, you have to understand what firewalls do. Okay? You, you, the firewalls essentially are going to define a set of rules that tell us what types of traffic are permitted or denied through our network. So these can either be software-based or hardware-based. If you have Windows 7 or above, Windows provides a software firewall for you by default. If you have Macintosh OS, anything from OS 10 and above, they all have a software firewall that you can turn on. A hardware firewall will be a dedicated device that does the same function and does it better than a software firewall would, and it will protect the entire network instead of just the one computer. Many firewalls will also perform your NAT and your PAT, your address translation that we talked about earlier. That can be performed either by the router or by a firewall. So different categories of firewalls. Two big categories we have are packet filtering and stateful firewalls. So packet filtering is all based on the packet header, and it will permit or deny traffic based on what's inside that packet header. So it looks at the source IP and the port number, and the destination IP and the port number, and we can actually block things just based on either port number or IP address, or both. It's going to look at every single packet individually, and it's just a very broad swipe based on the port and the IP that it's getting. With stateful firewalls, they're actually going to inspect the traffic as part of the entire session of data that's going back and forth. And so it can recognize whether traffic originated from inside or outside the LAN. So for example, if I go to Facebook, the firewall is then going to let traffic from Facebook come back to me. If I was using packet filtering, on the other hand, and it had a block on Facebook's IP, it's just going to block Facebook completely. Okay? Another thing we deal with with our firewalls is access control lists. These are the set of rules that are applied to the interface of the router or the firewall that will permit us or deny traffic of certain types. Our ACL filters contain things such as our source and destination IPs, our source and destination ports, or our source and destination MAC addresses. As you can see here in the picture, I have an access control list listed up here on the top. It says access list 100 permits TCP traffic instead of UDP. It permits any is the source, so it can come from anywhere it wants. And this destination is going to be the 10.1.1.0 network. And if it equals whatever that port is, in this case the port is www or port 80, web traffic. The second line is port 21 for telnet, excuse me, 23 for telnet traffic. And this is all being applied to this particular serial interface of the router. So as traffic from the internet comes in, if it's web traffic or telnet traffic, it will allow it in. But if it's any other type of traffic like FTP or SSH, it's going to block it based on this particular access control list. So for the exam, you should understand a basic understanding of how to read these access control lists. And like I said, it's fairly straightforward. It's going to tell you permit or deny, whether it's allowing it or not. It's going to tell you whether it's UDP or TCP or any, which type of protocol it's going to allow. It's going to tell you the source address, which can be a source IP or it can be any. In this case, it's any, so anybody can send to us. And then we have destination of where it's sending it to. Notice the second part of the destination, the 000.255. Any place you see a zero here, it means it's stuck. Any place you see a 255, it means it's a wild card. So this is opposite of what we normally use with a subnet mask. Okay. Uh, and this is just the way we do access control lists. So in this case, it's anything that starts with 10.1.1. something is going to be the destination. So if this HTTP traffic is coming in, it can go up here to the 10.1.1.0 network. So it'll go this way. But the router will not send it down this way because that is not allowed. It's only allowing it to the 10.1.1.0 uh, network. So that HTTP traffic can come into the Unix host or it can come into the web host. And then the same thing with this telnet traffic, it'll let it go to either of these two servers based on that ACL. So when we look at a packet filtering firewall, it is going to have our access list that stays the traffic from inside the network can go out, but no traffic coming from outside can come in unless it was uh, with, with a packet filtering, excuse me. So in this case, we have an access list of deny IP traffic, any, any. So any traffic coming in, uh, coming from anywhere, going to anywhere is going to be denied uh, based on this, this particular request. Um, on the stateful firewall, on the other hand, on the right hand side, we have where if I made a request such as Telnet Session A, Telnet Session A can come back. But if somebody tries to start a Telnet Session B, I never requested it, it's going to prevent it. If you notice the, on the diagram here, you see the stateful uh, firewall has a different symbol on it. That symbol looks very much like a diode in electronics. Diodes are one way, and that's what this is showing us, is that if you start it one way, it'll let stuff come back in. 
That's all that sh that's trying to show us. And again, return traffic for, t for session A can come in because we started the traffic in the first place. But if they're initiating it, it's going to block it. So with firewalls, we have things called zones. Generally, we talk about our inside zone, our outside zone, and our DMZ, or our demilitarized zone. Each of these interfaces on the firewall, each port on the firewall, can be defined as belonging to different zones. After these zones are created, you can set up rules, these access rules, based on zones. So you can say, stuff going to and from the DMZ, follow these rules. Stuff going into the inside network, follow these rules. Things going out of the inside network, follow these other rules. Inside is generally your internal corporate LAN. It's your trusted network. Outside typically connects to the untrusted network, the internet. The DMZ is a place where you have access from both areas. And it is not trusted or untrusted. It's part of your network you own, but it's held off into another area. Uh, it gets its name from basically the DMZ that we have in Korea that's between North and South Korea, where neither area it trusts that area, so neither one's supposed to go in there. It keeps them separated. Um, and that's the idea of this DMZ. We put things in there like our web servers, our FTP servers, and our, and our email servers because we need people from the outside of our network to access them, but we also need to access them as well. And so they're out in this other area. So as you can see in the diagram here, we have from the internet, traffic can go to the DMZ and from the DMZ. Traffic from inside of our network can go out to the internet and then get return traffic only based on a stateful firewall. And up here, our clients can access our servers. All traffic can go to the DMZ and return to the DMZ based on those particular firewall rules we set up. And that's our basics of firewalls.